everyone, and welcome to Pattern Showcase Tuesday. This was a little brainstorming idea that I had that I figured you guys would all like. And when I mentioned it in a live and a um, Vlogtober video, you guys seem to really like this idea. So Pattern Showcase Tuesday was born. This is going to be a series where every other week I go through either crochet patterns or knitting patterns. So this week we are looking at crochet patterns that sometimes may get swept under the rug because of things that are being pulled. There are so many designers coming up with patterns that sometimes really good designs get swept under the rug and get lost in the fray because there are just so many. Um, as well as some of these patterns aren't necessarily on the what's hot right now list. Disclaimer, my family's home, so you will hear thumps and bumps and kid noises and husband noises because they're all upstairs playing. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> life is happening in my house. Um, so, with that being said, this is to basically showcase those patterns that are not on the what's what hot what's hot right now list of Ravelry and possibly show you some new designers, some, you know, different things that we haven't seen before. And I am so excited about this. So let's get into it. Okay, guys, so we are on our first pattern, but I just want to give you a little heads up of how we're going to do this. We're going to kind of go by section. So first up, we're going to be looking at sweaters and tops. So this one is the Effortless Oversized Top by Tiam Safari. I am probably totally butchering that name, so we're just going to say the last name of Safari. <laughs> this is published on We Crochet website, which is a, I believe it's a sister site to Knit Picks. They are using um, the gloss fingering. So this is a fingering weight sweater, which mind you, this is a crocheted fingering weight sweater. This is going to take a lot of time um, and a lot of yardage. Um, this is oversized. So here's the issue that I'm having a little bit with this one. It is not necessarily super size inclusive. So as you can see, it goes from 45 to 61 and a half. And you're probably thinking, Holly, that is size inclusive. It goes up to 61 and a half. But downside, it's supposed to be worn with 12 inches of ease. So this technically, I believe, only goes up to a what? Extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. So those of us who are on the bigger size that may not get the oversized effect that we're hoping for out of this project, you could wear it a little bit closer fitting, but it is meant to be worn with it being oversized. Um, but with that being said, this pattern is available for free. So let's take a look at it. And I have to say, this is beautiful. Um, probably a lot of it has to do with the yarn. It, there's quite a bit of stitch definition that you can see. And it doesn't look super flat in color. And I love that they decided to use the seaming as a design element. Not many people think of that. And we kind of just tend to want to cover up the seams. But they decided, you know what? I'm going to use it as a design element. Not to mention there is also a split hem. So you could, you know, make one side a little longer, one a little shorter if you wanted to, like a high-low hem. But either way, I thought this was a very cute sweater and thought I would share it. So let's go to the next one. So this one is called the Light Touch Pullover. This is also a fingering weight sweater. Um, fingering weight. <laughs> it's a fingering weight sweater, guys. Um, this one uses a little bit less yardage at max 2,760 yards and goes up to 61 inches in bust. Now, this one's only meant to be worn with four inches of ease. So this one is a little bit more size inclusive. A little bit. It could be more. But, yeah, that's what I'm going to say on that one. This is made up by um, Natasha Robard, Robard, Robarge. We're going to go Robarge. It's probably wrong. I'm butchering names today, guys. Let's, let's just deal with it now. 
it's going to be sloppy here. <laughs> um, this was made with Caporetta Superwash. So this was meant or is made with a cashmere um, merino nylon blend. Um, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that's what Caporetta is. There's a um, cashmere in there. So let's look at this sweater. Guys, it is beautiful. I love the lace work panel. Let's get a better close. Look at that. Oh my goodness. So I feel like this sweater, although it is made with fingering weight, this would go pretty quick because there is quite a bit of lacing detail that it's not just all double crochets all the time and makes you feel like you're just in this never ending sea of body. Um, it looks like they're, um, okay. Are those the decreases that I'm seeing? I think so. I thought that was like a little lace panel on the side. Um, so there are some lace detailing on the cuffs, which I thought was super cute. And, Look at, oh my gosh, it's just so pretty. Like, who? Natasha is a genius. This is beautiful. I mean, yes, this is definitely something I would probably have to make. And I say that and knowing I have not, it's really hard to find a really nice looking crocheted pullover that isn't all half double crochets, all double crochets, you know, and I feel like this definitely fits the bill. Okay, so this one is the Bella Tuna tunic. Uh, Bella, wait, Batula, <laughs> Batula tunic. Um, I'm not even going to attempt this name, so if you are the de designer and you see this, I am sorry, but I'm just going to say the AKA Irali is what I believe it is. I am not sure. So again, this one isn't the most size inclusive, only going up to a 49 and a half inch bust. And this is meant to be worn with six inches of positive ease. I feel like they missed the mark here on sizing, but for those of you who are on the smaller size can definitely use this. Um, this is made with Wool of the Andes Worsted. So this is a worsted weight pattern. So this will probably go a little bit quicker and uses a lot less yardage at 1,320 yards. Um, it is free and it, I believe, is also on the We Crochet website. Um, and here is the tunic. It is beautiful. Let me tell you. I am not a cowl neck person. I am not a vesti person, but this is really pretty. Um, here is a shot of the high low hem. To me, it is a little, a little much. I wouldn't do so long, but if that's your style, you do you. It just isn't for me. Um, but I really love the way it looks with the cowl neck. Again, I'm not a turtle necky person. I feel very claustrophobic in like towels slash turtlenecks if it's super high like that, but it's still gorgeous. And I know there are plenty of you that do not have that claustrophobic feeling. Uh, I think this would make a really pretty vest for somewhere that may not get super duper cold. Maybe you, I don't know. Don't listen to me. Either way, it's cute. It is free. Um, so yeah, on to the next one. Now guys, oh my goodness. I absolutely love this sweater. This is the Colorwork Yoke Sweater by Amy Thunderson. It is crocheted with in the Provincial Tweed. So it is a worsted weight sweater um, using up to 3,750 yards of yarn. Now, that is a lot. It's a lot. Um, and this sweater goes up to a 62 inch bust with two to six inches of ease. So it can be, hi. it can be very inclusive in size if you choose to wear it a little bit more form fitting. Um, so this one I believe is also on the We Crochet website. It's not telling me if it is a free pattern or not. Let's, let's actually take a look. 
Uh, doo, 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 doo. It is a free pattern. You can download it for free. Now, let's look at the pictures because it is gorgeous. And I think Colin's deciding he's going to be my co-host right now. <laughs> um, this is a absolutely beautiful sweater. No, 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 no. You can't watch videos and sit with me right now, bud. Okay, well, you can watch videos and go, go upstairs with daddy. Okay. Yeah, go upstairs with daddy. So as you can see, gorgeous sweater. We do not have very many color work sweaters right now in crochet. That, I mean, the color work sweaters in the yoke is very hard to find in crochet period just because of the way crochet is it is leaning so it's really hard to get those perfectly stacked um stitches but this designer amy gunderson did a beautiful job with this sweater i mean the amount of texture in it the color work is just gorgeous i love it and like I said, this one is a little bit more size inclusive, even though it only has listed one, two, three, four, five, six sizes, it goes up to a 62. So you could pull it off as a 60 inch if you wanted a little bit of ease, more form fitting. If you wanted a little bigger, I'm sure there could be a way somehow to make it bigger. I'm not entirely sure. Let's get on to the next one. So here we are again with another sweater. I don't know what is going on, but sweaters are just everywhere right now. And well, I don't know what's going on. It's fall, dummy. But anyways, the amount of crochet sweaters that are coming out are amazing. And here is another one, the Gainsey sweater by Natasha Robard. Robarge? Robard. Robard. Anyways. This one is a worsted weight sweater with wool of the Andes Superwash, um, up to 1,540 yards, and this goes up to a 60-inch bust with four or six inches of positive ease. This is another free pattern. So technically, the largest size, if you do the six inches of positive ease, would be a 54-inch bust. Now... I believe that is technically a 3X. So, I mean, it does go up pretty large. It could be larger, though. Um, but that's just me. I feel like when you make a sweater, it should be made for all sizes or tell you a way in the pattern to make it larger. Now, I think depending on the back of this sweater, if it is not... Um, kind of having the same pattern as the front and say it's just the textured part. I definitely think this could be adjusted to any size you really wanted if the back is just the texture. You would just have to figure out the repeat of it and you could adjust it from there. So this sweater, <laughs> guys, it is amazing. I love the collar. I love the texture down the front, the texture overall period, the amount of texture, guys. It is taking something that could look so flat and just with that texture, it just makes it amazing. And again, a free sweater pattern. Like most, I think almost every single one we've seen so far has been free. Insane. The insanity. It takes so much time and effort and stuff to, and brain power to write a sweater pattern and it's free. Oh my gosh. Like these designers are fantastic. So this is the Bumble BT by Haley Berry. Now I'm almost positive this did end up hitting the what's hot right now list, um, but this is just too amazing not to show. This is a crocheted sweater with a bumblebee on it, a bumblebee. So you do have some um, color work going on in the sweater. 
This is done with a DK weight, but it says any gauge designed for designed for any gauge, which I'm a little confused about because they do give you a gauge swatch. So I'm guessing just anything, do whatever size crochet hook you need to get this gauge, but there's still a gauge. Um, oh, so any yarn weight to get gauge is what I'm assuming. Um, this goes all the way up to 1600 yards. It goes any size from child or adult. Um, so it does say this is not advised for beginners, probably because of the color work involved or maybe some of the techniques. Um, but it also does say that it is fully customizable. The pattern includes measurements to create adult sizes, small, medium, and large. But there are, um, what it tells you of ways to adjust the pattern to fit any size. So that is a plus right there. This is a paid for pattern at $7, um, which I'm not mad at because I know the, I mean, I have done a few patterns, never a um, sweater or shirt, but with knowing and seeing patterns for crocheted sweaters, cardigans, shirts, the amount of work that goes into it, I honestly think it is completely worth it. $7 is a lot with especially multiple sizes. I think it's worth it. It's a lot of work and they deserve to be paid for the work. So yes, I really love this sweater. Let's open it up. I haven't showed you guys it yet. Um, the amount of detail on that bead, though, I mean, it doesn't look like a lot, but it kind of is. I mean, that's a lot of color changes and just a lot of work, but it is beautiful. Even the texture just along the sleeve right there, just varying it up just a little bit to make it a little different. Absolutely love it. I mean, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And the back, it looks like it is just double crochet possibly. So super simple along, you know, the body, but most of the work is going to come in with the color work. So this one is called the Tallulah Sweater by Jelena Nemesinko. Senko. Um, now, this I was more thinking as a kid's sweater. So if you want to, you could say we are now in the kid's sweater portion. Um, I saw this and thought kid's sweater because of the fact that the sizes included only go up to an adult large. Um, so it goes from four to six, seven to nine, 10, 12, teens, adult, small, medium, and large. So size inclusive as in it includes children, but not size inclusive as in adult inclusive. Um, so when I saw that, I considered this more as I would use this as a child sweater than an adult sweater. Um, but you can if you are in one of those sizes, adult, small, medium, or large. Um, this is a paid for pattern at $6, which with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sizes, I think it's worth it, even though it isn't the most inclusive in adult sizes, but it also has kids sizes. And a lot of the times when you do a sweater, you will have children and adults separate. I know there are some that do them all together and those people are absolutely amazing. So. With that being said, it is a sport weight sweater and you will need approximately up to 1,213 yards. Um, so this is what the sweater looks like. It is absolutely gorgeous. I mean, come on. I love how the sleeves kind of have that, um, oh, I can't remember what it's called. It could also be worn as a sweater or as a shirt. So just like that, boom, shirt, easy. Um, I love the little detail at the bottom with the little picots and the puff stitches. Um, 
I love this little area. To me, I feel like, though, that this is definitely a kid's sweater, in my opinion. Not that there's anything wrong with wearing this as an adult. I just think it's more kid-friendly. I don't know. That's just me. But anyways, it is $6. If you like this sweater, you can head on over to Ravelry and pick this one up. So this one is the Crunch sweater. Um, well, it's just called Crunch, but it is a sweater. And it's, this is by Maybe Katie 10. And it is a crocheted sweater in sport weight, approximately 850 yards. And this goes from 12 months, 18 months, 2T, and 4T. I think this sweater is so stinking cute. Um absolutely adorable. It has just this little textured bit in here just to break up some of that double crochet, it looks like. And oh my goodness, the little buttons and <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um so yes, this is a super cute sweater. Here it is without the little boy in it. Um, I figured this would be great since it is going to get cooler soon. This sweater is adorable and it could work out so quickly because it is a baby size sweater or a child size toddler, baby toddler size sweater. It should work up pretty quick. And if you get like a good size, like, I don't know, a pound of love or one of the big pounds of, you know, baby yarn that could work up so quickly or, you know, doing even um, hand-dyed yarn that would be like, what, two stains max of hand-dyed? Oh, my gosh. That would be amazing. So this pattern is $3.99 um, in making crochet garments for neither Lacey or Frilly, therefore perfectly suitable for a boy. That is adorable. So she says, Join me on the never-ending quest to make crochet garments that are neither lacy nor frilly and therefore perfectly suitable for a boy. I honestly love that because I feel like a lot of the baby sweaters that do come out are very much aimed towards little girls and little boys kind of get left out of it or it's super plain and it just, you know... Either way, this sweater is super cute, and honestly, I may be making this for Colin because it's so adorable. Next up on the baby toddler uh, sweaters is the Baby Bobble Jumper by Safari. I'm not going to say the last name because I'm going to butcher it again. Now, this is a worsted weight sweater with up to 624 yards, fitting everything up to 24 months, so up to two years, um, meant to be worn with positive ease. She also gives you the bust measure, test measurements. Uh, so, you know, if you have a smaller child and they can fit into it, you can make it work. Um, this is also available for free. This is a We Crochet website pattern. I just thought this was super adorable. I don't, this I figured would be super adorable for those who love bobble stitches and would prefer to make something like this and their child is under two. So like I said, this is free, has a good amount of sizes for small babies up to two years old and really doesn't require a lot of yarn. So that's also a plus, like, yes. On to beanies. Okay, so here we have the Mainstream Beanie by Jessica Cooper. This is a worsted weight hat uh, with up to 175 yards. Now this, I feel, could easily be the go to beanie pattern because it goes from newborn up to adult. Now, this is what I'm talking about when you see patterns that have sizes from baby to adult. It's amazing and I love it. Um, the pattern is $3 and it is available at crochet at creations.com. And like, guys, this beanie is so adorable. I love the way it looks. And that faux fur pom-pom. 
So here is a picture of all the sizes from newborn to adult. As you can see, there are eight sizes. This pattern could be used for literally everyone. And that is something that I really love when I can find a pattern that has a size for everyone. And those are the patterns that I'm going to go to time and time again because I don't have to go look for a teen size, a baby size, a toddler size, an adult size. When they're all together, it just makes life so much easier. And I can honestly see this becoming one of my crochet go-tos for hats because a lot of the times I get stuck in, I don't know what to make for a crochet beanie. I haven't found one that I really like that looks good. That Not that there aren't any that look good, just ones that are simple, that look good, that have some texture that I can use for every size. Nothing has ever really ticked all those boxes for me, and this one definitely does. So if you also feel the same way about this beanie, I would definitely go check it out and purchase it. So here is another one. This is called the Snowy Walk Ombre Hat by High Desert Yarn. They are using loops and threads impeccable. So this is an Aran weight and requires up to 190 yards. This has child and adult sizes for $3. Now here's what I love about this hat. Now I'm sure you're thinking, Holly, we've all seen hats that look exactly like this, and I'm sure you're right. But the one thing that I love about this is the speckling of color isn't perfectly even. It's very much uneven, very asymmetrical, kind of comes in wherever it may, and I love it. I don't find myself going towards those hats that look like every single different color stitch is placed perfectly or symmetrical on the hat. I love this. And when you look at her actual beanie while she's wearing it, you can see that there are all different sizes and everything moves differently. I love it. It makes it look more, I don't know what the word for it. <laughs> I'm trying to think it makes it look more authentic. But that's not what I'm thinking. It looks I don't know. I can't think of the word. But either way, I love the way it looks. And I think it would be amazing. Um, it does have a child and adult size of so two sizes, not necessarily as many sizes as the last hat, but still super duper cute. <laughs> So this next one is the Sabago hat and cowl. So although this is a cowl and hat set, I still left it in the hat section. Um, so yes, this is made with super bulky yarn. The pattern designer is Michelle Denayer. Um, it is available for free. Um, this is made with the Mighty Stitch, Mighty Stitch Super Bulky from Knit Picks. Um, and I am not a big fan of super bulky hats and stuff like that. I feel like it makes me sweat. It's too big and hot. But I know a lot of people love that. And they're super squishy. I'm not going to deny that. They are super squishy. But I figured this is a really cute pattern. There's lots of texture. And the hat is so pretty. And can we just say, this model is gorgeous. I mean, seriously, she knows how to work a camera and really show off patterns, you know, but this is just super pretty. Although I couldn't see myself wearing it or making it, it is still beautiful nonetheless, and it is available for free. Snow Mountain Hat, also by Michelle Denaire. It is a fingering weight beanie um, with 924 yards for a hat. Now, that's a lot. I'm not going to lie. That's a lot. But I believe it's for four different colors. Again, also for free. And I believe the sizes would be a child to adult, if I'm assuming correct. I could be wrong. Um, but again, it is free. But guys, this hat, now this hat I can see myself making. I would love, love, love to make this hat. 
Um, I actually have some yarn in mind that I have for this hat. So I may definitely be picking this one up myself. Um, and for it being free, why the heck not? <laughs> So this is the Spiral Tunisian Cow. So if you're a fan of Tunisian crochet, this may be your chance, not your chance, your uh, your pattern to go to. <laughs> um, this is in worsted weight, and this is made with Swish. So this is a merino nylon blend for yarn. It is 220 yards, and again, it is free. These pattern designers are amazing. Oh, and the designer is Akalori Designs. So this definitely looks like it is, what us see, 220 yards. The so switch comes in 50 yards. Uh, so definitely a 100 gram project, I would say, possibly. So as you can see, a little bit of texture and some eyelets possibly. I think this is super cute. Unfortunately, my wrists do not like Tunisian crochet. They hate me when it comes to that. So I wouldn't wear it. Well, I wouldn't make it. I would wear it. I wouldn't make it. But this is a beautiful Tunisian crochet cowl and it is free yet again. These designers are amazing by sharing these patterns for free. This next one is the Facet Cowl by Ruth Wynn. And this is a worsted weight cowl, uh, requires 396 yards and has one size of 24 inch circumference and eight and a half inches high. This is available for free. Um, let's see, this was using the Chroma worsted. And I just have to say, this is gorgeous. I love the way the colors dance from each other. And that black just makes that pink. And those purpley colors just pop as well as, you know, the design itself. Super pretty. And I think it is gorgeous. So next up is the Maple Hills Cowl by Lee Saratori. Saratori? Saratori? We'll go with that, I guess. Now, this cowl is $3.50. It is a Aran weight using the Premier Yarns Anti-Pilling Everyday Worsted. Um, one size fits most. Um, and I said, yeah, $3.50. So this cowl is super pretty. It is so textured, and I am absolutely loving it. Loving it. It reco uh, requires up to 420 yards. I'm sorry guys, I am getting so tongue twisted because we are doing like 25 patterns. I kind of went a little crazy and above and beyond for this one. There will not be this many patterns the next few <laughs> the next time because it is taking so long to go through all of them. I went a little bananas this time because I was able to find so many amazing patterns that have come out and I just had to share all of them with you. So this is the Ansel Wrap by Erica Press, Press, Presnell. This is a fingering and fingering weight held together to make a worsted weight. She used the crochet uh, Knit Picks Palette Yarn um, in the herring half double crochet herringbone stitch. Um, this does require up to 3,234 yards, and it has one, two, three, four, five sizes available, which you don't typically see in a wrap, multiple sizes, but I think that's awesome, and I think the reason she did that is because it is planned to be buttoned, as you can see. This is also available for free. Like, seriously. <laughs> These people are just getting nuts with all this free stuff. Um, so as you can see, this is definitely gingham style. Um, so definitely holding them double would help give you that really nice marled effect to really blend the colors of your gingham. And as you can see, she does use buttons to 
hold them together. So you'll have a button loop to create and stuff like that. Not to mention that fringe is amazing. Amazing. I love the fringe. So definitely a small cozy wrap that you could wear while you're out pump pumpkin picking, apple picking, you know, even just having bonfire night, something that you want to keep yourself a little toasty. Definitely, definitely check this one out. So now we are in the home section and you're wondering, Molly, why is an apron in the home section? Well, honestly, because I don't know where else to put it. <laughs> it's not a sweater. It's not a top. Um, and typically you're only going to wear it when you're in your kitchen. Maybe. I don't know. So we are in the home section of the patterns. Now this is the Knit Picks Kotlin. It is a DK weight, requires up to 750 yards, is a one size, I'll say fits most, because you could, well, no, it is one size, because all you have to do to make it bigger would just be to lengthen the straps to be able to tie around you. Um, so let's look at this. Honestly, this is so cute, and I have never seen an apron done before in crochet, and it is so simple. But it is so pretty. Like, I absolutely love this. I think it is so cute. And the photography is amazing. <laughs> like, this makes me feel like I am at a super cozy farmhouse. You know, someone's baking pies and there's a fireplace somewhere and we're having tea together. This just, sorry, I am going on and on about photography and not the actual <laughs> pattern. But... I thought this was super adorable and I love it and I will probably be making my own. Um, this is available for $3. Now, this is part of a, um, oh, what was it? A cowl. So this is part of the Christmas Kitchen cowl. The uh, pattern is available for free on her blog. But if you choose to, you can buy it here and get it ad free, which is, and for me, I always go for the paid pattern just because I hate ads on blogs. It makes my computer run so slow. Um, but that's just me. If you want to get it for free, you definitely can. Um, also, she is doing something where if you purchase any four or more of her regular price patterns in Ravelry, in her Ravelry shop, and get 25% off with no coupon code. So if you really like her designs and you decide you want more, there is definitely more where that came from. Next up is the Buffalo Plaid Kitchen Towel by Jennifer Pioink. Now, I have made some of Jennifer's patterns and I absolutely love them. I would say she is pretty popular amongst the crochet crowd. Um, crochet crap oh the crochet community um and this is the um like i said the buffalo plaid kitchen towel it is made in dk weight up to 230 yards is going to be needed and it is one size but easily customizable so if you wanted a bigger towel you could make it bigger or smaller um it is a paid pattern on Ravelry. If you go to her blog, you can get it for free. And this is also part of the kitchen Christmas cowl, Christmas kitchen cowl, crochet along cowl. I was saying it wrong. Um, so you can get this for free on her blog and it is part of a cowl that I believe is going on until I know I saw it somewhere. I believe it was the 20th. So this is what it looks like. There is a little simple button right there or button here and a slip there so you can button it around your um, oven handle. My brain can't think. Okay, so next up is a trio of textured cushions by Safari again. <laughs> this is worsted weight and requires up to 2,834 yards. It creates a 16 inch square pillow and it is available for free. Um, so it comes with three different pillow patterns. 
There is the first one that is just super duper textured and looks super squishy and cozy. This second pattern, also super textured, but it's a little bit more open between the stitches. So I would definitely use a pillow form and not stuffing the pillow on its own. Um, as well as the third pattern, which has cables. And you guys know how much I love cables. And you can see this nice detailing edge right here of cables and cables along the front. Oh my goodness, I need these pillows. So next up is the Popcorn Pro by Kristen Stoltzfus. I'm not sure I said that right, and I'm sorry if I said it wrong. Um, this blanket is a worsted weight, requires up to 3,280 yards, which looks like it's about a lap size blanket. Now, this is a free pattern. I am not a bubble stitch person, but this is such a cute, such a cute blanket that I could see myself making it, even though I do not like bubbles, but it's still beautiful. So, oh my goodness. And the photography just really makes this blanket shine. So as I said, this is free. It is a basic blanket with a bobble stitch border. So if you are someone that really likes bobbles, um, head on over there. The suggested yarn is cotton though. I don't know if I would like that. Um, I feel like that blanket would be very heavy. Um, if it was cotton, but you know, whatever floats your boat, you can definitely use a different type of yarn for this. And honestly, if you use like a acrylic, that would be a super squishy blanket. Okay. So next up is the unicorn basket by stitch studio design team published on AC more craft arts and crafts. Um, this is a Aaron weight project and does not say how much yarn is required but it does tell you that there are one two three four five six different colors that's a lot now i don't know the yardage I mean, there is no actual amount telling you how much you need of each color because there are six different colors that they would have to figure out how much yardage you've used um but I thought this was super cute because I have a daughter who, as she saw this, decided she wants me to make her one. So I figured this one would be super cute to share. And I mean, unicorn. How can you go wrong with unicorns? So our last category for today is amigurumis. And I know... A lot of people love making amigurumis. I am not one of them because I really suck at stitching things together, crochet wise. So, but I can't leave out amigurumis. There are so many people that absolutely love them. I love them, but I suck at making them. <laughs> this is Bucky the Reindeer by Stitch Studio Design Team again. It is an AC Moore Arts and Crafts made with Aaron Weight yarn again doesn't necessarily tell you how many yards you're going to need, but you will need three different colors of yarn. Um, it is available for free, and this is what Bucky looks like. This is so cute. I don't know what it is about Christmas time and reindeer that make me so happy, but I absolutely love this, and I'm honestly thinking I'm going to have to make this for myself because I love deer. I don't know why, but I do. I absolutely love them, and I think they're so cute. And, yes, this is adorable, and it is a free pattern, and I figured this would be a really cute gift for Christmas for your little one. So, guys, I found this one, and I about peed. It is so cute. This is the Merida doll by Stevie Hill. It is used worsted. It's using worsted weight up to 300 yards. It is a one size doll. And guys, it is Merida from Brave. I love Brave. It is one of my favorite movies from Disney. This pattern is 550. It is a little on the pricier side for an amigurumi, but I feel like there are so many parts to this doll that 
definitely makes it worth it. So not only do you have the doll itself, you have the hair, you have the, <sighs> I'm totally blanking on what this is called, but the little thing that holds the arrows, you have your bow, the cape, the doll. I mean, it is freaking amazing. Like, oh my God, this is amazing. Um, as you can see, it is very detail oriented, even like little stitches. <sighs> it is so cute. So this is the final pattern. Um, and I really, really, really hope you guys like this. Um, and let's, well, let's go to the outro, I guess. you can. Okay, guys. So this is the first and I was going to say first and final, <laughs> the very first pattern showcase Tuesday. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Please let me know how you, what you thought, if you like it, if there could be any adjustments made. Um, I won't be doing more patterns because I think 25 is like top. If you want less patterns or um, maybe say you want less patterns, but you want me to go into more detail, show you the yarns that they recommend, or if it is a free pattern, opening up the pattern so we can talk about it. Um, I can't do that with the paid for patterns because that's, you know, not, that's against the rules. Um, but I definitely think, sorry, my, I can see that my hair is like super fluffy and weird back there. Um, I definitely think I will really enjoy this series. Um, next week will be knitting patterns. Um, but I definitely don't think I'm going to be doing 25 patterns again. <laughs> it is very long and I feel winded from it because I have to think of something to say for every single pattern, which sometimes is easy. Sometimes it's hard because things are basic and you can see for yourself what it is. So with that being said, this is the very first Pattern Showcase Tuesday. So please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up so I know if you have any recommendations um, for things you would like to see or any pattern recommendations that you feel should be shared, definitely let me know. Um, or maybe I could do a, you know, a viewer spotlight. So if you're a designer and you would like your design to be seen, you can let me know. So it could be a viewer showcase. Um, so yeah, I am open for any and all suggestions if you would like to share. And that is it, guys. I hope you enjoyed this very first episode. Bye.